Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking PWM Mantis, a new synthesizer, analog hybrid type of synthesizer that came out this year. I've had it in the studio for about a month and I'm giving you my thoughts as a musician. PWM has no idea of making this video. They didn't sponsor anything. They didn't send me anything. Also, this is not going to be an exhaustive review. I'm not going to go through every single detail, even though this isn't a very complex synth by any means, but there's some little gotchas here and there, and I'm definitely not going to be able to cover everything in this because I just want to give an experience video, basically. Also, if you enjoy this content and want to support the channel beyond a like and subscribe, consider using my affiliate links below. They directly support the channel. So thank you very much. So again, it's a hybrid analog synthesizer. The oscillators are technically digital. I think it's the Oxford oscillators. It's basically the same type of technology that's in the peak and the summit. And what makes that different is that it's not rated in kilohertz. It's rated in megahertz. So the resolution of those oscillators is extremely high. But beyond that, it goes into two paths of analog circuitry and then ends with a digital section for reverb and chorus. And of this analog path, there is a dual filter where you can either do duophonic with LP12 or uh, stack them for LP24, or do the wide band, uh, wide notch type of stuff. Similar to the peak actually, but the character is different, obviously. Yeah, let's play it. So this is the very first patch that loads up. After touch. It's in quad mode as well. Quad mode is a little confusing. I was thinking paraphonic initially, like uh, like the matriarch. But I don't think that's the way it is. I think the only thing that's technically paraphonic is the filter. I could be wrong though, because one problem with the synthesizer is there's no manual. Like they haven't put out a manual. There's like a quick guide to get you started, but there's nothing about the details. In fact, I couldn't find anything online about the, the little shortcut of holding shift and then changing the oscillator level to control how much volume goes in the filter. That's kind of like a hidden shortcut that they don't have anywhere on the website. At least I don't think they do. Maybe they did and I missed it. But anyways, back to this patch. It is quad. And it has a lot of character. Let's drop the resonance down. Work with the cutoff. Hit the drive harder. To me, it's just got a lot of character and expression. Which it needs, because it is technically an expensive synthesizer for just being two voices in today's modern era of stuff. It is a small group that makes this stuff, so you do have to cut them a little bit of slack, and that's why I do cut them slack on the whole manual thing. I'm like, it would be nice to have a manual, but okay. But the character in this... It just feels like an expressive synthesizer that you can't really judge by paper. I feel like a lot of people fall into that trap in today's market of trying to decide if they want to pick up a synth or not. They kind of look at the specs and then go, mm, why would I buy this when I can get a Hydra synth or something? And they're just two completely different perspectives. <laughs> this is a character synthesizer. It is purposely driven to have a window of options for you. Its design and choices lead to character. <laughs> Anyways, let's check another patch. Ah, uh, bass patch. Let's get rid of this reverb. The reverb, I think, is like a spring digital. Not a huge fan of it. I'll take off the chorus as well. Again, to me, character. It is a synth meant to be played. Let's go to an init. Go like that. 
So this is saw, I believe. Yeah, triangle, sine, square, and then organ mode. It's pretty cool with the quad. Let's drop the cutoff. Throw some dirt in there with the drive. Let's bring this to LP24. A little bit of resonance. Put a little movement in the cutoff. Actually, let's talk about this modulation real quick. Modulation is very limited. Could be a big turnoff for a lot of people. You'll see some controls have like mod next to them. So cutoff, modulation. Shape, modulation. Pitch, modulation. That might actually just be it. But you look down here in the mod section. If I want to control this cutoff modulation destination type of stuff, I click on filter cutoff right here. And then it says the source is envelope two, this guy. And then scale is full on. So it takes some sort of effector, like the joystick, aftertouch, velocity, or the pedal, or 100% on. And then it takes whatever source, could be envelopes, LFOs, notes, or full on again, and then sends it to the modulation for whatever device that you're selecting right there. So let's change this to LFO two. And now, If you want it to retrig at the same time, there's a little retrig button right here. Creates a little more predictability. Let's throw some reverb on there. Put the low pass, high pass on there. Let's crank up the time. So the reverb, again, take it or leave it. <laughs> you probably want to add a reverb pedal or a plug-in afterwards anyways. Let's drop this cut off even lower, a little more drive. Let's adjust the shape. Put some shape modulation in there. Let's go oscillator one, shape, is being controlled by LFO two as well, full on, okay. So same type of rhythm as the filter cutoff. Anyways, let's hit in it and go back to this. Interesting oscillator. I, I'm not sure how often I'm going to use that. It's cool for the chords and kind of giving like the simulation of what feels like an organ because I believe it's technically emulating organ harmonics. So like the low end is different from the high end and that type of stuff. You know, it's it could be something interesting. If that's what you want. There is also a wavetable. I think it has seven shapes. And that is what you get. If you want to change the wavetable, you cannot right now. Maybe you could in the future. It's possible. I know in the peak, they added the ability to add wavetables down the road, but I don't know if this has any support like that whatsoever. So I wouldn't really bank on that if that's what you're thinking, but it is nice to have some sort of wavetable. You could do stuff like this. So one thing you can't do is stack up on modulation. For instance, right now, I'd like to push in and raise the cutoff of the uh, filter frequency. Can't do that. So it's definitely limited in that sense. So whatever you get is a one-to-one -one destination. That's it for your modulation. Extremely limited in modulation. So again, this is a character synthesizer. You are gonna use this because it has flavor. <laughs> Specifically, you're not gonna use it because it can emulate all these different tones and sounds and have very fine control over, over modulation and all that. That's not what it's gonna do. It's not its purpose. Honestly, if you want that, the Peak and Summit technically do that already. Uh, Hydrosynth Explorer, a fully digital one, just to throw out a few options right there. Let's go back to another init. So, there is two oscillators, and you can mix them with this. You can hear that like subtle phasing shift. And I believe oscillator drift will affect this even further. Let's go quad.
There's a sub dedicated to the oscillator one. Let's switch it up and go pulse. And let's go shape modulation on both of these. So I'll take the shape modulation left on oscillator one and the shape modulation to the right on oscillator two. Maybe a little too much uh, modulation on the shapes. Actually, where's the, it's LFO2 and LFO2 on both of these, so. Filter cough, full on, and then after touch. Now I added a little after touch to the cutoff. Let's bring this to LP24. A lot more aggressive. So, one of the tricks for gain staging is you hold shift. And then you adjust the mix of oscillator one and two balance. So this is all the way down. A lot more quiet. Let's bring it up to noon. More aggressive. Let's take quad off. Personally, what I hear, I hear a lot of nuance coming through on these notes. Nothing feels exactly the same. And that's honestly the reason to buy something like this is you want things to have immediate character. I know I've been saying that this whole video and I want to reaffirm it even more because that's really the reason to spend this type of money on something like this. Because obviously you could pick up like a Novation Peak for around the same money and have a lot more flexibility. So you have to ask yourself like, what's your goals? <laughs> To me, this would be the perfect indie synth band type of synth. Tons of character. We definitely need to add the delay at the end. sine wave because it is kind of crunched up pull back this drive bring it up a bit triangle. It just seems so playable. I'm getting lost in the sauce. Where was I? Character. 
That is the name of the game with this. So envelopes, I haven't really talked about them and honestly, I haven't really messed with them all that much. You got some repeat features and some sustained fall, which is definitely interesting to add some nuance and character to whatever patches you're making. As it stands with the end of patches, really just kind of kept them like on or off. And they have a nice analog clicky feel to them. Like that right there. It's tough to describe, but when you hear it in the digital domain, it seems obvious that it's digital. Playing it live in front of me, I can feel the snappiness of it. It's actually one of the problems that I have with the Cobalt from Modal Electronics. I feel like the snappiness of the envelopes gets a little too digital sounding, like it's clipping or like, like it's straight up clicks like a sample rate issue. This sounds like guitar pick type of stuff. Let's increase the envelope. The release. Put it in quad as well. Up the attack. Let's turn down the cutoff modulation. Clearly not a patch that excels on a synth like this because of the voicing. So I'm not expecting to create a bunch of ethereal ambient type of style pads on this or anything like that. Because again, I think it excels really well as a synth voice, a distinct synth voice and not like a washed out ambient type of synth voice, which again, something like the peak or summit would excels tremendously at probably because it has that amazing reverb attached to it as well. But I digress. Let's talk about some cons. So the reverb, not a fan of it. There is times where I can make it just subtle enough to slip into the sound where it feels like it's part of the, the cohesion of it. But when I think of just pure reverb, like it's not really my favorite type of thing. This, uh... see this right here. This feels like it blends in relatively well. Turn down the drive. It's almost like it's the room ambience that's being recorded from like a microphone. <laughs> so reverb, you know, take it or leave it. You're probably gonna wanna add an effects chain at the end anyways because of delay. Uh, the chorus is pretty good. Turn down the reverb. Here's chorus. It's pretty classic. Number three is a bit more in there, and it's also a little noisy too, which I kind of like. Which you mix this with that organ sound. <laughs> it's a pretty great organ sound. So I'm like two octaves lower now, and I'm still getting quite a bit of high, high harmonics at the top. And that's what this oscillator does. But that mixed in with this chorus. Really cool, actually. I have a pedal hooked in the back, by the way. That's why I'm letting go and still having notes ring out. Yeah. Anyways. <sighs> Character. Saw wave right there. I'm just immediately excited to play that type of synthesizer sound. So, so I was saying cons. <laughs> Let me get back on track here. 
Uh, the overall build is okay. I wish it was a little bit more solid feeling. It does kind of have like a plasticky feel. These knobs are not bad by any means, but they do kind of have a bit of a, I don't know, not like premium grade. They're, they're okay. Also the layout, uh, it's very like, kind of utilitarian. Meaning I feel like it could have had just a bit more personality for where how things are represented. Because it's all the same knobs in this grid. And I feel like if the lights are off, it could be a little difficult to know exactly where you're navigating for stuff. Usually certain key elements have bigger knobs, like a cutoff frequency type of thing. And that's missing from this. Things like the shapes of the oscillators, I would have liked to be a little more distinct or stand out a bit. Because those would be fun to, fun to twist when you're performing. And obviously the cutoff and the drive as well. And speaking of things feeling maybe a touch cheap, <laughs> this joystick, not a fan of it. I liked being able to do that. You get some great fluid feeling pitch bends with being able to just jiggle the finger. But if you want to have just the Y axis modulation, very difficult to just get that. With just a little wiggle, you're already pitch bending. Another strange thing is this hold, where if you hold it down, then you get hold, but if you let go, it releases. Like, huh? <laughs> Why would you do that? Why not just have a button up here that says hold, or a button over here that would be the hold button? Because also, I'm not even sure you can get modulation on the minus with this. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, I'm not sure. It does work with the arpeggio though, so if you have the arpeggio on, you hold some chords, go like that, release the chord. Didn't work. Okay, I think you have to go like this. I think you have to hold it, then let go. There. That's what makes it work. <laughs> I feel like you could screw that up really easily in a live setting. To clarify, so if I go ARP on there, if I turn it on and go like this, I have the arpeggio working right now. Okay? If I hold this down, let go, doesn't work. But if I hold this down and press the keys, and then let go, I have an arpeggio going. Can jam on top of it. So, a bit quirky. I like the idea that you can jam on top of these ARPs and kind of control it that way, but just a couple mental gymnastics I feel like I have to jump through to make that connect and work. And I don't know if I'm gonna do that in a live setting, personally. So yeah, joystick, maybe not the best. I also ran into some tempo syncing issues when connecting to USB. So I tried to sync the tempo with the arpeggio with the USB uh, MIDI sync on Ableton. It just wasn't working. I don't know if there's some sort of setting that I missed, or maybe there's a firmware update coming in the near future that's going to fix something like that. Maybe I just screwed something up, but it seems like it wasn't working for me. And normally I can figure these things out. So, but yeah, overall, I think the Mantis is a very cool, characterful type of synthesizer. It's the type of thing you reach for if you want something that's going to have some immediate flavor, but still feel like it's rooted in like your typical traditional synthesizer type of sounds. So I mentioned earlier about like an indie synth band and I, I really feel like this fits the bill incredibly well for something that's modern, that's being manufactured right now. You don't have to rely on some older piece of gear that might break down or something. This will get you some like quality character right away for a synth voice that can blend inside of that type of band experience. Where this does not excel quite clearly is being a overall multi-purpose synthesizer. And I don't think you should think of it as, oh, this synth should give you like 16 voices of anything that you could possibly imagine. It's like, this is not what that's designed for. This has a sound and you buy it for its sound and it's relatively fast way of manipulating sounds on the interface. I actually didn't mention that, uh, but it is really fun to just grab knobs and tweak stuff as you're playing. Even though they all look the same, but overall when you do understand where things are and grab them, it's pretty fast and great and feels responsive. So again, do you want personality immediately out of your synthesizer? Then the Mantis is going to do a good job. If you want lots of modulation control, the Mantis is going to fail horribly because it is very limited in modulation. Like you can't adjust the rates of the LFOs from some sort of modulation. That's like that was my immediate thought is have like the shape modulation controlled by the LFO and then have the rate get adjusted from like an aftertouch. Can't do that. Not possible. Or let's just say the mix of oscillator one and two, maybe adjust that with modulation. Can't do that. 
Oh yeah, and the patch system is actually really cool. You dial in your number right here and it does come with 100 patches. They sound great. You do have a bank B to make your own patches and you can make them super fast. Like it's extremely fast patch making system on here. And it's a lot of fun to make them, but it is gonna be limited. It's gonna have very distinct options for a particular box that it fits into that has a mantis sound to it. But if you're looking for that like perfectly balanced blade to cut through something to give you distinct character, this will do it, in my opinion, of course. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap it up here. That's my review of the Mantis. If you are planning on picking one up, consider using my affiliate links below. It directly supports the channel. So thank you very much if you do do that. Also, thanks for making it to the end. I appreciate that. And yeah, I'll see you next time for another one. Peace.